Hi, this is Sean with Crew Dog Electronics, and I'm going to show you how to build your own Stratex unit. You can buy all the components I have listed below on Amazon for a little bit under $200, depending on the prices. Uh, that's including all the accessories with battery straps, all that sort of stuff. Also, I, I make these units online pre-assembled and tested on the Crew Dog Electronics website for about $240. First is a Raspberry Pi 3 board. I've gone ahead and put on the heat sinks on this board, but it's not necessary. The Raspberry Pi project is basically a ready-made computer board that has a lot of functionality, <clears throat> USB ports, Ethernet, uh, HDMI, uh, audio port. It's got a, a Wi-Fi and, and also Bluetooth. For the Stratix project, we only use the USB ports and the power port here. So a lot of people uh, wonder when they get their Stratix assembled what the HDMI and the, the audio port here is used for. It's, it's just part of the, the Raspberry Pi board and not used for our purposes. The other thing uh, most people will want is an AHARS chip. This is also at the bottom. This includes a AHARS chip to give you an attitude uh, indicator for your favorite EFB software and also has a fan controller. Here's the USB radio receivers along with the pigtails. This is the internal GPY uh, GPS unit. It's a WAS enabled GPS. And you can see it's got some extra shielding here to help it get better reception uh, inside the unit. Here's the best antennas to use. Once again, they're at the bottom. There's also antennas available from a company called New Elect. You can go ahead and read on uh, Reddit and a couple other online forums. There's been a lot of testing done, and these are the ones that will give you the best reception. So I highly recommend the ones that I have posted at the bottom of the video. I prefer this case. This has got my company logo on it. Uh, this case is designed by Ryan. Um, it's nice because it's, it's compact. It's got a, a lot of features here. Uh, ports on the side for airflow, and also has got a, a fan uh, that, that works pretty well. Haven't had many issues with these fans, and I've built quite a bit of these. Lastly is the Easy ACC battery. I like this one because it's got a built-in cable here as well. Uh, this is 6,000 uh, milliamp battery. It'll get you about three to four hours of flight time. Some people that are using the Stratix for longer flights, you can just buy a higher capacity battery. Uh, the only thing you want to watch out for is you get a, a good name battery. Easy ACC makes, makes good ones because if you get a cheap battery, they've been found to cause interference with your radios. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you how the assembly works. I've already put the heat sinks on. Uh, this comes with the Stratix kit, um, or you can buy the, these little heat sinks uh, on Amazon. I'll put the link at the bottom for you. And put those on the, the processors right here. Next. I will put the AHARS chip on. So you can see the there's little cutouts here for the pins. Just put that at the top of the board and you can see that's going to line up. Gently push down with your fingers. And you want to make sure the prongs here are facing down at the bottom. You can see there's a positive sign there and that's where the fan's going to plug into. The positive goes to the red. Next step, I will plug in the antenna pigtails. So you want to unscrew the, um, the nut here. Now you can see there's three parts to this. There is the base, which is just a little gold ring. There's a locking washer here. You can see it's kind of got spring tension. That goes in the middle, and the actual nut, which goes on the outside. So you want to take both of those off. And then you want to place these through the holes in the top of the case. This goes all the way up here. And make sure this, this order is very important. You want to put this guy on the bottom, the one with the spring that will give you the tension. Put that in the middle. And then put the nut finally on the very top. And you can just hand tighten that for now. I found it's easiest to do both, both at once. And then we'll actually tighten them with uh, screws that come included with the kit. So I'll put the other one on. Once again. Got the base with the little teeth on the bottom. Got the spring washer here in the middle to give it tension. And we'll put the nut on the top. And I'll just hand tighten those. Now this next step is very important. Um, some people have issues with their unit. Now you can see if these aren't tight enough, if you were to screw in the antenna here, you can see this is going to rotate. And look what happens inside the case. This is just going around. and. You could eventually break the wiring in here if you don't have that tight enough. So 
This procedure is very important. What you want to do is get the wrenches that came with your kit. And you should have two wrenches. So you want to put one on the inside right here just to hold tension on that and keep that from turning. And then with the other one on the outside, you can go ahead and rotate and tighten this up. And you want to get this fairly tight so you get some tight uh, tension on that, that washer in the middle. And you can see I'm just holding this with my thumb, rotating with the other one. There we go, that's nice and tight. And now you can see when I put the antenna on, even though this is tight, it's not going to rotate. We'll do the same thing for the other side. One wrench in the middle and the other one on the outside, just carefully tightening this nut. There we go. That's nice and tight. All right, next step is to put the Raspberry Pi board in the case. You can see there's little cutouts here, so there's only one way it can really go in. It's got the slots there for the power cord, the HDMI, and the audio out. Next step, you want to put your uh, radio USB uh, receivers on here. 978 should go in the middle. It's very important um, because you want this underneath the USB or the sorry the GPS unit, and then right next to it, this is going to be the 1090. That'll go on the bottom as well. And so you can see when you're done, you've got the 978, 1090, and you've got the GPS on top. Next, you can connect the fan to the fan controller. So like I said, the positive goes to the red. So red goes to the positive. And then black goes to the other side. All right. And the fan is going to go on this side over the processor. Next step is going to be to connect the pigtails to the uh, SDRs down here on the bottom. So these just kind of push gently in place. You can see there's a slot right there. So I'll just push these in with my thumb. One, you can hear it click. There's two. And you want to kind of route these underneath the GPS unit. And you, there's a little space right here between the USB ports. And I kind of stick them right there and put this board back on top. Next, you can just close the case up. And you want to get your screw kit and apply all your screws. All right, once you got your screws, you want to turn the unit over, just hold it together, and put the six screws in the little ports here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And there's a little screwdriver included in the kit. Just use those to tighten it. All right, <clears throat> those are all tightened. And the last step is going to be insert the SD card. Now I've got a video on how to flash the SD card if you haven't bought one that's preloaded with the software. Uh, you'll need at least the two gig. Most people get eight gig because it's the cheapest. 
So that goes here in this little gold slot. Um, you can see the gold ports, or the gold uh, stripes go up. Just push that in, it's not gonna click or anything. And that's inserted, then you're done. You wanna go ahead and power up and make sure it works. So there's a the little mini USB port. Power cable is included here with the battery. Push that in, get a red light indicating that you've got good power. You're gonna hear the fan spin up as it powers on just briefly, and then the fan's gonna remain off for the rest of the time because it's controlled by the temperature sensor on the AHARS uh, board. And that's normal, it's just conserving power. It only powers up when you need it. So we'll give it a moment. There you can hear it. We'll get a solid green light here momentarily. And the solid green light means that the software is up and running. If you get a flashing green light, it means you're having a software problem. Easiest way to fix that is just to reflash the software. So it should be up in a second. There you go, got a solid red and a solid green. Last step is going to be to screw in your antennas. So when you put the, the stratics together, you wanna to remember which side you put the 978 and the 1090. Uh, the newer versions of the case are going to have that screen printed on there, so you just want to make sure you line it up properly. Uh, with the ones I build, I, I go ahead and label them. Um, so usually it's 970 on the left, 1090 on the right, but the antennas are, are tuned for each uh, radio signal, so you want to make sure you're lining them up properly. And that's it. You can go ahead and connect with an iPad or a tablet and go to the address 192.168.10.1 and it'll show you the Stratix unit uh, up and booted. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Wait for the Stratix network to connect and then you bring up your favorite web browser. I use Chrome. All right, we'll type in 192.168.10.1, hit go. This will bring up your status screen. You can see the status is connected in green. That means you're connected up. And this will give you a basic status of what's going on with the unit. You can see the software version at the top, 1.4 revision 3. Uh, 1090ES shows you the 1090 traffic. UAT, you're not going to get any traffic. That's the 978 weather traffic. And that's only when you're inside of a tower. And you can see there's no towers over here. And that's normal because you're not, um, that works for line of sight. That's only going to work in the air. There's your GPS solution. You can see it's connected because it's connected there with the USB. Uh, no solution right now because I'm inside. If you go outside, you can build a catalog of GPS satellites. I'd recommend leaving it out there for about 10 to 20 minutes the first time you boot it up. And we can keep going through the menu. The GPS AHARS will show you that the AHARS is working. You can reset level. And you can see when I move the unit, the AHARS will, will move as well. You can reset and level it to calibrate it back here on the side. All right, that's it. Your unit is booted up, working. If you've got any questions, post them here on the web channel. Uh, follow us, Crew Dog Electronics, on Facebook or send me an email. Thanks for watching.